Honorable President, sir, first and foremost, a big, big thank you from all of us in honoring us by hosting us for tea today. We have had panel discussions across India featuring all the contributors to this book. And these panel discussions continue, but this marks the largest gathering of the contributors and it took you, sir, to enable this to happen. Thank you. You have been a big supporter of causes regarding women and education. Indeed, the importance of education and mentors, of parents, particularly fathers, is evident in many of the stories in this book. That it is still not an equal world, despite progress made, clearly requires continuing effort in this direction. I'm often asked, why this book? And as I say in the preface of the book, the Nirbhaya incident happened in the deep, dark days of December 2012. I remember feeling a deep sense of shame and despair about us as Indians and fear for my daughter, myself, the women I employ. Two weeks later, I took over as President Fiki, and the questions from foreign dignitaries were inevitably around the poor state of women in our country. We had more women CEOs of financial institutions than any country at that time. More CEOs of IT companies, albeit multinational companies, CEOs of FMCG companies, leaders in media companies, heads of legal firms, women in government, many of whom are here, but these stories were not widely known. We don't celebrate our successes enough. So I decided on a book that documented this, a book that could guide women to achieve greater heights, a book that celebrated India's successes. These 30 great women share their stories, their vision, their advice in their voices in this book. They are the writers as contributors and my ask of all of you is please keep writing and talking and inspiring women to enter the workplace. The inevitable question women ask is around work-life balance, the guilt. Many step out of the workplace not to return. Their doubts need answers. Now, as the number of women multiply at the workplace and their experiences over the years shine through, I'm confident that the women who deserve it will get a fair chance. I can only hope that an enabling environment will allow men and women to succeed on merit in an equal world. Ultimately, the outstanding women covered in this book are just a few examples of contemporary Indian women whose stories are meant to enlighten, to inform, and hopefully spur a change in perception. And as women earn and contribute, families recognize their worth, and the girl child is celebrated and fated. The goal is that we will bequeath the world to our children where men and women can both aspire and will have the chance to be what they want to be. This is the India we all dream of. Thank you. And thank you, sir, again for having us all with you today. Good afternoon to all of you. Naina Lal Kidwai, Chairman, India Directors, HSBC, Asia Pacific, distinguished contributors to the book 30 Women in Power. First of all, I would like to welcome you to Rashtrapati Bhavan. the historic building which has witnessed the making of modern India, particularly from the beginning of the last century till today. I am indeed happy to be here this evening to meet the distinguished achievers who have contributed to the book 30 Women in power. I congratulate Naina 
a banker for excellence, for taking the effort to anthologize the accomplishments of these extraordinary women. I also compliment all the eminent and empowered women leaders featured in this book who are pioneers in various fields of activities. The stories and the experiences of their journey towards success will serve as an immense source of inspiration and motivation surely to all women, but also, I may add here, all persons irrespective of men and women, as these are the stories of challenges. These are the narrations of the success of indomitable courage, conviction, commitment, and dedication without which nobody can succeed in any way. This book will also help sensitize men, particularly to the policymakers and administrators, the problems women are confronted with every day and make them realize that respect for women must inform every decision they make. The book is important not only because it is a celebration of women empowerment, but also because it a timely reminder of the battles that still need to be fought and those that are being fought each day by women to find their place under the sun in this society. The book is about inner strength of women and how far their determination and faith can take them, as I mentioned earlier. We as nation must respect as sacred the rights of women to equal opportunities and dignified living. The first steps in this direction, in theory, have already been taken in our Constitution that envisions equality for all, but as I mentioned in theory, it will have to be practiced in many areas of activities by making appropriate women-centric legislations and also fully implementing the 73rd and 74th amendments of the constitutions and to implement in letter and spirit, not merely by ratification, but by affirmative action of international conventions, including the Convention on Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. However, a lot still remains to be done, especially in the direction of translating laws to reality. More girls need to be imparted education. More women need to be encouraged to get economically empowered. And more institutions need to support the aspirations of women. Once Swami Vivekananda observed, and I quote, it is impossible to think about the welfare of the world unless the condition of women is improved. It is impossible for a bird to fly only on one's wing 
unquote. If given a window of opportunity, women who are natural multitaskers have the potential to rise and excel in any field of their choice. We need to build such mechanism within institutions that facilitate the growth of women into decision-making positions. One aspect that worries me immensely is the growing violence against women. The society which cannot respect its women simply cannot be called a civilized society. In the Vedic civilization, women were always given <coughs> the highest level of respect <coughs> and freedom. And at the same time, their protection and safety was a sacred duty of society as a whole. This is our culture. <coughs> this is our heritage. And we cannot allow ourselves to forget this. It is our collective responsibility to create an ecosystem that ensures safety, security, dignity of women in the society. I would like to mention two distinguished achievers very recently, whom I had the privilege of recognizing in a public function. First, I had the privilege of conferring Rajiv Gandhi Khel Ratno Award on Sanya Mirja, who has done the country proud by becoming the number one player in the world for women's doubles in tennis. Similarly, Urunima Sinha, a recent rewardee of the Tenjing Norge National Adventure Award, is also a source of inspiration as she has overcome her handicap and has participated in several national and international expeditions, including Mount Kilimanjaro, Mount Elbrus, and Mount Everest. She is the first woman amputee to scale the world's highest peak. These are the sources of inspiration, and society must recognize them. Before I conclude, I would like to once again thank you very much for organizing this function and assembled here. I would like to, before we join for a photograph and a cup of tea, I'm changing the format a little bit, but because I'm interested more to have your own stories, how you do feel, of course very briefly, to tell me any five or six of you can spell out that what you feel is the immediate task. Those who are framing the policy of the nation in charge of the largest functional democracy of the country should do to empower women, not in words, but in action, I would like to have your views. Thank you. Very distinguished contributors of this really illustrious book, 30 Women in Power. Thank you, ladies, for giving us the pleasure of receiving you in Rashtrapati Bhavan. Thank you indeed. Jai.